In this video, we're going to watch a Muslim convert talk about the true meaning of Islam and what it was talk about in the Quran, how it differs from Christianity, and why there's more terrorists coming out of these places like Britain. There's more people supporting ISIS in Britain, supporting Britain, things like that. He's claiming these things. I am not. Watch what he has to say. Let's get into it. That's exactly why I said the terrorists have nothing to do with Islam. But when you start studying the texts themselves, when you start looking at the Quran, and you start looking at the Hadith, you start looking at the Sira literature, whether it be Sira Maghazi or what have you, you will find violence woven into the very traditions of Islam. The core traditions, not peripheral traditions, the Quran and the Hadith, foundational pillars of Sharia. Now, what is happening today? Why are people getting radicalized in various pockets around the world? Why are people leaving Canada to go fight for ISIS? Why are people leaving America to go fight for ISIS? Right now, at, at the most conservative count, we have over 5,000 non-Middle Easterners fighting for ISIS. There are more British citizens fighting, British citizens who are Muslims, fighting for ISIS than fighting for the British. Why? How do we explain this? Are they all stupid? Are they all demonic? No, let's not demonize people like that. Let's try to understand their reasoning. Every single one of them gives you their reasoning very clearly. I remember when these three Bethnal Green girls, um, who, Bethnal Green's a city in England, um, who were at the top of their class, they were the most popular girls, they wore their hijabs. Um, you can still see their Twitter accounts, by the way. Uh, they, they were very devout in their Islamic faith. They told their parents that they were going out for an outing. They managed to escape to Syria through Turkey. Their parents couldn't understand what happened. You know, their parents didn't, you know, of course, didn't support terrorism. They said, what happened to our daughters? Now, the media, of course, is, it tends to lean on the compassionate side. Uh, it tends to, not always. Um, and so they're, they're willing to say, oh, those girls were brainwashed. They were brainwashed by recruiters. Uh, they went from being the smartest girls in their class to complete zombies, and they just were brainwashed. That's not what the girls say. The girls said to their parents, Mom, Dad, if only you knew what Islam actually teaches, then you would understand. How can they say that? Girls are at the top of their class. What did Osama bin Laden say in 1999, before the Twin Towers were attacked, when he was having a, an interview with an ABC reporter? He said, be ready, we're coming for America. We're going to bring down those towers for no other reason than for the defense of Islam. How does that work? What, what's the connection? Is he just an idiot? No. By the way, you might be like, why is he telling me some of these names? I'm never going to remember these names. Uh, the other day, um, Boko Haram uh, executed uh, a bus full of people. Uh, and in order to test whether someone was Muslim or not, they said, what was Muhammad's mother's name? And if they knew it was Amina, they let them off the hook. So Amina, that's, that's Muhammad's mother's name. So uh -huh. Muhammad comes into Medina and gets full control over the city from the get-go. The first time, now, the first 13 years, Muhammad had a total of about 100 to 115 followers. That was it. For the first 13 years, that's how many followers he had. Now he has a fighting force in Medina. Now he can fight. Within the first year of him being in Medina, he starts launching raids on caravans. He starts telling Muslims to attack passing merchants because there was a trade route that passed close by. One of these attacks led to the Battle of Badr, the first major battle that Muslims fought. It was an offensive attack that led to the first major battle between the Meccans and the, and the Medinans. I had always been taught that Muhammad only ever fought defensively. It's not what the records show. By the way, Surah 8 is all about that. Uh, and it actually says that Allah sent you out, Muhammad, to fight against the caravan. And when you got there, you saw an army. You wanted to attack the weaker, the, the caravan, but Allah guided you to attack the army. So this is recorded in the Quran, but uh, like I said, when I was Muslim, I just recited the Quran in Arabic. I didn't know how to interpret it. So I never actually, even though I recited the Quran seven times as a Muslim, I had never actually read the stuff and understood it. And he says exactly what people don't want to say. It's because he used to be Muslim, okay? He knows it. Okay, the Bible says, if any man preaches another gospel to you than has already been preached, let him be a curse. What was preached to Muhammad? What gospel? Another gospel was preached to Muhammad by an angel. Okay, so if you're if you're genuinely living in the spirit, and you believe everything the Bible has to say about demons and the devil, 
then you're going to believe that what was preached to Muhammad was probably a demon or a fallen angel preaching another gospel because you see the fruits that come out of it. So we're all human. We all fall short, okay? So you can say that a lot of Christians back in the old days, they committed a lot of crimes, okay? Because we're all human. We all fall short. If we try to live up to God's glory and what his word says, and we're not going to go out and do horrible things, okay? But a lot of a lot of men committed a lot of crimes in the name of God. Clearly, they weren't following His commandments, okay? When these atrocities were committed, so they want to try to name off the Crusades. They want to try to name off all these things where we're defending against the complete invasion of Europe. When you don't want to talk about all the enslaved, they just want to talk about the white man being evil, enslaving. When Muslims have been enslaving the entire time, there's so many slaves out there. St- still going on right now okay it's because it's an agenda being pushed it's a complete agenda that the ruling class is pushing okay and they want to try to tell you that no christianity is just controlling it's just controlling use for the sheep but they don't want to say anything about islam it's because christianity jesus sets you free the bible says the truth self sets you free i'm the way the truth and the light and no man comes to the father but by me jesus says Okay, so he says that, and it's true. It's not a lie in the Bible. And you know what's funny? In the Quran, it says, the previous revelations have been corrupted, but you're supposed to believe the Bible. So they're supposed to believe the Bible and all these, all their Old Testament prophets, yet it's been corrupted. So, so if they believe the Bible, if they believe all of the previous revelations, okay? If all of them are true, then the Quran is false. If Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light, and no man comes to the Father, then the Quran is false. Okay, so what does that mean? People will put it in a better way than I'm going to put it, but if the Bible is true, and the Quran says the Bible is true, then the Quran is false. Because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and the light. No man comes to the Father but by me. So that means there is corrupt. There, theirs is corrupted, okay? What is the fruits? He already sp- he's spoken about the fruits. All that's coming out of Islam is terrorism. Okay, so you want to get the left that comes out and says that not all Muslims are terrorists. Okay, yeah, that is true. Not all Muslims are terrorists. Not all Muslims are terrorists. Okay, but their texts speak. That's what it's speaking about: violence, killing infidels. So that guy is in risk of being killed because in those in those countries where it's Muslim controlled, when religion is not even letting you convert, okay, when they have to do things by force, there is a problem. God's word is powerful enough. We don't have to force people to do anything, okay. They'll try to tell you these leftists, these people will come after you for standing on a street corner preaching, saying you're forcing. Go to go to Muslim countries. Well, they'll put you to death for not believing. They'll put you to death. They'll stone you for being LGBTQ, okay? And you want to come after us Christians, say we're radical. Well, maybe we're not radical enough. Maybe we haven't been standing up for our values and rights for our Second Amendment. Jesus says, sell your cloak and buy a sword. But making Christians seem soft and weak. Meekness isn't weakness. It means sword sheathed, okay? Jesus says, turn the other cheek. Don't live by the sword because you'll die by it. But he also says, buy a sword. Why is that? He also says, he says, sell your cloak. The Bible is full of wars, okay? Wars where God led our hand in righteous combat. King David with the Philistines, the Canaanites. That was Old Testament, right? And that's what they try to tell us. That, oh, what about the Old Testament? What about slavery? What about all these things? There is a translation, okay? So that's indentured servitude, okay? And the world has fallen. So God has to tell us, teach us how to live in this fallen world, okay? God is working it out. He worked it out. If God can own a slavery, why did he deliver slaves from the Egyptians? Why did he deliver slaves from the Egyptians if he can own slavery? Because I'm, speak- I'm speaking right now to the people watching that are atheists right now and that don't believe it, okay? You want to condemn the Bible? Well, let me tell you straight up. That's what it is. That is what it is, okay? And you want to come after Christians saying the Old Testament, this is the Muslims out there that will say, oh, the Old Testament is full of war, full of slavery, and all this different type of stuff, okay? That's, 
we are the Bible in the Old Testament wasn't calling. It is not the number one thing it is calling to do. The Quran speaking about killing infidels. Okay, the Bible doesn't speak of that. The Bible does not speak of stuff like that. So you can see the difference, the two differences there. Okay, with the Old Testament, that's the last resort when the Canaanites are straight up killing babies. They're putting them into bronze bowls to burn okay babies being burned alive okay and god had to have that happen all right when when their prophets going around killing and enslaving making wars just making pointless wars for riches for loot just going around killing and enslaving so they're going around killing they're going around looting they're going around enslaving that is their primary cause jesus never killed a, a man Jesus never killed anyone. He never picked up a sword. He called us to turn the other cheek. He told us to bless the poor. He's giving us all these teachings that are completely against Islam. So why why is it that people are coming out? That people are following Islam? That are terrorists? So what, what Christians out here? So there's Christians that have done evil things, but they weren't following Christ's teachings. But then there's these terrorists that are following the teachings of Islam. Why is that? So you line up the te oh that matches those teachings match to what the what what the Quran says, and then say some some Christian out here that claimed he was a Christian, a mouth professor, did did crazy horrible acts, and we all fall short. But there's Christians out here. Oh, I follow God. God told me to do it. Ended up being demons. Okay, because the Bible, what he did was completely contrary to what the Bible says. Okay, so you're, what his actions did will never line up to what the Bible says. It's not going to say in there kill the infidel. It doesn't say attack your family for converting. So that's what it is. So I, I, I agree with this, what this guy is saying. And I'm, I'm, I, I pray that every single Muslim converts, finds the true God, living God, Jesus Christ. Because without him, they will not have salvation. They will not have everlasting life. And they're not going to find peace. All they're going to have is war, warring. And their goal is to conquer the whole entire world. But guess what? The end times will happen. You'll have your you'll have your apocalypse. You'll have the Antichrist coming and all that. But Jesus will rule the world. He will be the one that rules the world eventually. Mark my words on it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Nicholas Renner. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you on the next one.